An innovative approach to tackling CO2 emissions. These plasma reactors are used to convert the gas into renewable fuels and valuable chemicals. Annemie Boheres is the head of this research group at the University of Antwerp. She says this process requires some of the brightest minds in the field. We are in a chemistry department, but our research is very interdisciplinary. So we have a lot of engineers, physicists, uh, chemists as well. So we need to attract them from other countries. And actually our group is very international. Boheres says the hiring of new postdoc researchers from the US is also in the pipeline. Researchers at this lab tell me their work requires a diverse team with great chemistry. And they say acquiring talent from the US has become easier over recent months. It's a trend not isolated to this lab. Academic institutions globally are both competing and collaborating with one another in the quest to innovate. As tensions between a number of US universities and the White House persists, Vice Rector at the University of Antwerp, Martin Venn, says this uncertainty is prompting more academics from nations like China and India to view Europe as an increasingly attractive destination. It's not clear what is, what are, what is the potential in the long term for people when they move to the US. Well, it is quite clear in Europe. I think that's, that that certainty uh, or that uncertainty in the US uh, will uh, make people change their mind to go to the US, uh, to come to Europe instead of the US. For the European Union, it's a timely trend. Over recent months, the Commission's launched a number of programmes designed to close the competitiveness gap with the likes of the US in key sectors such as technology and science. Back in July, its quantum strategy was released with a goal of sparking innovation and startup growth to become a global leader in the field by 2030. A decade further down the line, the EU hopes this class of technology will be worth roughly $180 billion. Academics like Reinhild de Vugelers, a senior fellow at the think tank Bruegel, says it's too early to say whether there will be a large-scale brain drain from the US, and challenges remain when it comes to talent acquisition. It's very often that they turn then to the US market because that's a much bigger single market willingness to pay also for for uh, new innovations here and there in Europe, yeah, that, that framework condition still is, is, a, is an issue. Netherlands-based Naturalis is both a natural history museum and a leading research institute for biodiversity. While nations like the US may be leading in fields such as artificial intelligence, Naturalis's managing director for digital, Dimitrias Koreas, says Europe can evolve to become a hub where such technologies can make a meaningful difference. How they can apply in areas like biodiversity um, to be able to deliver more results. And I think this is something that then can flow over in other regions of the world and position Europe uh, not so much as a technology, source of technology, a new technology, but as an amazing powerhouse on how these technologies can really have impact. By digging out more than $11 billion annually, the EU aims to be a global leader in life sciences by the end of the decade. In an increasingly competitive world, the bloc says that fresh initiatives are needed to ensure that Europe remains at the cutting edge. For CNA, I'm William Denslow in Antwerp.